You as a filmmaker and someone who admired The Godfather, do you think it was a faithful adaptation? No, I don't believe that. No. I'll, I'll give you just one example why I think it's not. See, when I, I was reading Godfather, it for me was like overwhelming. Especially the description of the characters. So to give an example, there's a chapter it begins from 1935 to 1937. The name of Santino Corleone sent shockwaves through the underworld. But even he in sheer terror was eclipsed by the awesome man called Luca Brasi. Luca Brasi was one of the most feared men in the eastern underworld. His great talent, it was said, was that he could do a job of murder all by himself without the help of any confederates, which makes discovery and conviction by law almost impossible. Short, squat, massive skull, his presence sent out alarm bells of danger. He was in himself one of the great blocks that supported the Don's power structure. He did not fear the police, he did not fear society, but he chosen to fear and love Don Corleone. Now, this description Amazing. did not reflect in the, in the way he showed Luca Brasi. Okay? Now, Luca Brasi is just like a, like a like bumbling a guy. Yeah. He is a henchman and he's talking. But if we know this reputation, this is his background, the impact of that scene is going to be far more. Okay, yes, uh, Ma uh, Coppola does not have the time, I mean, uh, luxury of time to tell a story in this kind of a detail of characterizations. I understand, probably. Uh, but I do not believe he had the intention also for that. Right. You know? I, right. I think, uh, uh, I mean, it's like every, when, when you read a book, you know, everyone reads it in a different way. I don't believe the read, the, the information could be the same. See, for example, when, when I called a writer first to write uh, Sarkar, I asked him to read Godfather. So he said, uh, no, and as you first read that and come, and he came and said, I was, no, no, it is too verbose, he said. No, I thought, what is verbose in Godfather? I was quite surprised. Then when I interacted with this guy, this writer, then I realized how he would have read it compared to <laughs> how I read it. So, for example, if I, if I read it like from 1935 to 1937, the name of Santino Corleone sent shockwaves through the underworld. He would have read it from 1935 <laughs> to 1937, the name of Santino Corleone sent shockwaves through the underworld. So Obviously, like, it is not the like same. Essay. <laughs> it is not the same. Right, right. Yeah, you, know? you got to visualize so when you're reading. So, for me, Godfather was, it's a more of a philosophy. I don't think it's a real film at all. See, for example, when Tesho is being taken hmm. and he realizes that uh, his game is up, in anyone in that kind of a situation will either do some, in some way or the other to save himself. Tell Mike, it was only business. Now, that is Mario Puzo speaking of the philosophy of mafia. <laughs> it is not, not, uh, okay, no character would speak like that in a situation like that. But that could be the reason it made such a big impact. Because any philosophy, philosophically strong book uh, as a tendency like Ayn Rand's Fountainhead has a much bigger impact, even though the characters might not be really real. Yeah. Right, right. So, the other aspect of God, The Godfather is till The Godfather, mafia dons were shown in a very stereotypical form with long yeah, coats, sitting in a dingy cave with a bass voice, talking to their henchmen, the very formal English. Yeah. And uh, Coppola changed the entire scene by bringing in someone who is a very family-oriented individual who runs his business in the home office. Yeah. And that becomes evident uh, when the scene, the very first scene, shifts into his daughter's wedding and it suddenly becomes a family function. And yeah. you realize, uh, you know, Don uh, uh, Cornelio is actually a family man. Yeah. And you took a very similar approach uh, in Sarkar. Mm. So... I would, I would say this approach is much more in Satya than Sarkar. Because mm. if, if Sarkar, I'm, most of the time, I treated women in outfocus in the background, not, never gave them too much importance, which is not the case with Satya. So in Satya, I, I remember, see, like when, uh, uh, when, uh, when Francis Coppola said, no one can connect to a person who can kill someone in cold blood. But they can connect to a man who is making spaghetti in a kitchen. <laughs> so the man who is making the spaghetti kills, then the connection happens. Right. Which is what I did a lot in Satya. Like no one knows really how a gangster uh, behaves or this or that. But Bhikkhu Matre having a wife and they are also having their fights with each other. Like any, anybody can relate to that. You know, they would have had similar experience sitting in the theatre. Right. So when that guy goes out and shoots somebody, 
it becomes real. Right. So that is what I took from uh, that line of Godfather of the spaghetti right. example. Right. Okay. So, and the fact that they they are they're like normal people. Uh, they're not, like everyone will have a family because well, we are when talking about the earlier films, they look like they came from nowhere. They come from the dark and disappear into the dark after they do. Right. Which is not the case in real life. You know, they will always have their families and their individual t tastes and X and Y and Z, all of that, you know. So, if you look, if you believe the polygato, when he's called first after the attack on the dawn, he has a cold. No, no <laughs> one will ever think a gangster will have a cold. You know, you know right. what I'm saying? Right. It is so small it, it, in, in detailing. But that is what which makes it look real. Right. He's sneezing and he's using his, uh, uh, I mean, like a hanky handkerchief, yeah. 